<sighs> Today I'm going to be reading from Jennifer Elise Forrester. Um, this book of poems is called Leaving Tulsa. It says, Leaving Tulsa, a book of road elegies and laments, travels from Oklahoma to the edges of the American continent through landscapes at once stark and lush, ancient and apocalyptic. Forrester is of German, Dutch, and Muscogee descent and a member of the Muscogee Creek Nation of Oklahoma. Yeah, I'm gonna read a selection of her poems and then I'm going to read a poem that I wrote um, that was inspired by this book of poems. Relic. An atlas on the underside of my dream. My half-shut eyelid, a black wing. I dipped sharp quills in the night's mouth. Moths swarmed from my throat. I pulled a, I pulled a feather blanket over my skeleton and woke. A map of America flapping in the dark. Once I dreamt of inheriting this. My mother, who still follows crows through the field. My sister's small hand tucked inside hers. Me on her breast in a burial quilt. Richer than anyone in heaven. I abandoned my shoes at the corner of Market and Pine. It was hailing. We were holding tin pots above our heads, collecting the granulated wind and singing. I don't care about my shoes, I said. The city was in ruins. Pieces of fiberglass glittered in gutters like particles of space shuttles, of a moon shattered. We will be richer than anyone in heaven, I said. We stole from parlors the dying embers, gathered the porcelain figurines, on the fizzled trees, leaves clanged like spoons. Our shopping cart squeaked down the cobblestone street. Sawtooth lightning slashed the sky. Will there be music, you asked, on the other side? We listened through wind vents for echoes of earthquakes. Listened for God until the radio died. A hawk floated down like a frayed paper crane, snagged its claws on the electrical wire. We crumbled the hands from statues of saints. Beneath the cathedrals were underground trains and we rode every one of them to its end. Each station was a burned out lantern. I want to go home, you cried, but even the ferries bobbing on the docks had canceled their passages. We sat in the dark, eating crusts of stale bread. Come with me, I said. We stumbled beneath the starless night. We climbed the vacant streets. From the crown of the bald, illuminated hill, the city's windows dazzled. A flock of geese scissored over smoke. Back home, my television blinked and snowed. the outskirts. Each day is a threshold of the same dream. I awake to the clatter of leaves, a frayed dawn cawing in its wooden cage. Each day the same street, each street the same name, surfacing from a cut bank the sketch of your face, or only my reflection, streaking the glass, a train, tunneling through morning fog. I skirt the park into city blocks. Green glass and bottle caps collect, among, collect along the curb. Newspapers tumble under blusters of boots. I walk with crooked wind under thick bougainvillea. Call back horses from the corridors of hours, then climb to the meadow and lie on my back as the old men tiptoe among the bones. 
Below the traffic is a crushing river, somewhere between wanting to be found and not wanting to be found. I bury my hands, turn in the grass. Late light filters through a canopy of leaves. The greening hills seal themselves, shut around the graves. Leaving Tulsa for Cosetta. Once there are coyotes, cardinals in the cedar. You could cure amnesia with the trees of our back 40. Once I drowned in a monsoon of frogs. Grandma said it was a good thing, a promise for a good, a good crop. Grandma's perfect tomatoes, squash. She taught us to shuck corn, laughing, never spoke about her childhood or the faces in gingerbread tins stacked in the closet. She was covered in a quilt, the creek way. But I don't know this kind of burial. Vanishing toads, thinning pecan groves, peach trees choked by palms, new neighbors tossing clipped grass over our fence line, griping to the city of our overgrown fields. Grandma fell in love with a truck driver grew watermelons by the pond on our Indian allotment, took us fishing for dragonflies. When the bulldozers came with their documents from the city and a truckload of pipelines, her shotgun was already loaded. Under the bent chestnut, the well, where Cosetta's husband hid his whiskey, buried beneath roots her bundle of beads. They tell the story of our family. Cosetta's land flattened to a parking lot. Grandma potted a cedar sapling I could take on the road for luck. She used the bark for heart, le for heart lesions doctors couldn't explain. To her, they were maps, traces of home, the Milky Way, where she's going, she said. After the funeral, I stowed her jewelry in the ground promised to return when the rivers rose. On the grassy plain behind the house, one buffalo remains. Along the highway's gravel pits, sunflowers stand in dense rows. Telephone poles crook into the layered sky, a crow's beak broken by a windmill's blade. It is then I understand my grandmother. When they see open land, they only know to take it. I understand how to walk among hay bales looking for turtle shells, how to sing over the groan of the country road widening to four lanes. I understand how to keep from looking up. Small planes trail overhead as I kneel in the Johnson grass, combing away footprints. Up here, parallel to the median, with a vista of mesas weavings, the sky a belt of blue and white beadwork, I see our 160 acres stamped on God's forsaken country, a roof blown off a shed, beams bent like matchsticks, a drove of white cows making their home in a derailed train car. before waking. Empty highway, forest in the distance, cobwebs mapping the clearing of the pines. In a meadow of burning grass, a book before you. A tree drops its charred apples, crow comes to eat. You will gather the seeds and continue to travel. Climb the bone strewn mesas, the mountains a doorway at your side. This is the place of your birth. Pass by it. There is nothing left here to remember me by but webs. Spun from cedar smoke. 
where my footprints disappear down your throat. Apple of my eye. One. I am watching my reflection in the dark and drafty window. A crow on a crown of cedar calling out for her other wing. Two. In the drooping orchard, plump pomegranates. I am watching the crow's broad wings rising, slow over branches, beaks pecking into white flesh. It is late November. My stomach is a stretched canvas of winter where birds spit skin onto the browning grass. I lay beneath the frozen limbs, thinking of pomegranates, of what it would be to be inside a bed of glistening chrismon seeds as a tongue slides over me, breaks me into juice. Three, uprooting the body was effortless because I woke with no word from the stream beneath my skin, a child wrapped in the net of my breast. Because I called her aloneness, the word on the tongue, the same word as watercolor, desert scape, taupe line, the many shades of stone. Because I slipped across the indistinct shadow couldn't make out the black rock from, wa from waters after twilight. Make sound as you cross, the little girl called, barefoot four stones ahead of me. You will be safer if they can hear you coming. Four. In the erupted doorways of the pre-dawn, I walk into the frozen orchard. Blankets of blackbirds peck at husks. Hunchback women lean from the night. I call to them. No answer. In the clearing, the child has candles for hands. I look for the blank of the moon on the branch, one eye like an ember, one socket of snow. A black wing crossing a circle of stones fills your tracks with shadow. Behind me coils a trail of leaves. I call for the crow from the lattice of trees, tempt her with memories of gleaming apples. It is imperative you tear her up, she calls, nuzzling her beak deep inside me and spitting the seeds on the forest floor where the sun in the morning is shattering and brilliant with the prism of your ghost drumming in the hollows of your crushed body. Five. Sirens gather apples in their tents. They spit the scraps of my eyes into the fire string my hair through the cemetery trees. Beneath Raven's teeth, a little girl runs into the crevice of the sunrise. Dawn flares in the stained glass window, ignites my palm's white cross of flames. Six, I open my palms. She shatters them, glass windows stain the snowdrifts. I light a candle in the mar marbled hall she dances with ribbons, willow sticks, a black ponytail on a pinewood pole. This is still not enough to gather back the seeds I spit out into gutters. Because it was not my hands, but an instrument that removed the ovular body, widened cracks in her half-closed eyes, a place to slip through, dim light in the kitchen at daybreak, glint of bread knife on the floor. The buttress of the dollhouse buckles. The chest of a magpie splays across pavement. I rummage the carcass with a fishing pole, unhook the dream from its vanishing. But it is only the dream's fresh lace of snow outside the window. As I go into the kitchen, place a warm nest on the pine table, crush nine small eggs to swallow. The Lost Book. Pavement of the gas station steaming. Almost home. On the side of the turnpike, west of Tulsa, brushing dust from a tattered spine, a Chevy truck spills cantaloupe, cicadas, 
deafen the sultry twilight. Smells of mesquite, sweet grass, the orange tinge expanse of farmland. I'm just another lost American, smashing locusts on her windshield, addicted to a damaged range and the highway that seems it. That I would name you Magdalena, prairie dress hemmed with a gasoline rainbow, that a fire brims in the distance. As you fill up my tank for another hundred miles of the nightscape's host of neon buffalo, that California fades away, my grandmother's backfield's black, ho black horse silo, like a woman in a trailer window, tumbler in one hand, cigarette in another, her broke down arc of dust, dogs and birds' nests, flames rimming the hillsides, lace fringe of nightdress, crossing the Rockies, Rio Grande, Windswept plains, aspen stands, I pocket a scrap of your country of ash, azure coasts, manzanita groves, tangled swamps and marbled sands, that I would promise to rewrite the pages left behind, strewn across highways of God's green country, where gold snake ripple across the on-ramp, where guttered armadillos drown in oil, where buried beneath another god's aluminum quilt, one little girl at the Cherokee trading post, slamming stall doors and screaming at the mirrors, becomes two women on an empty highway, lighting up anthems, windows smashed. They switch off the stolen Chevy's busted front lights, they sow these roads, they drive by night. Shamira. I have traveled this continent for no other reason but to search for evidence of your existence. In the stars, America, your highway vanishes. Black moths are captured in headlights and swallowed. In the beginning, you had said, we were cracked against the sky. Now I read the highway for fallout of your name as you step again into the passing lane, turn to the illuminated crest of hill where a traffic, where a line of traffic outlines the dark. In your silhouette, I can still see myself as a child waiting for a car to swerve around the corner. But no car came that afternoon. I stood there in the patient street, my summer dress rippling. This is a poem I wrote called Migration. Migration. One. I am flying through speckled light as the days grow shorter, moving east, away from a sky blotted out by smoke, a magpie with white above and below my wings. Two, Sophie is cutting out the words. I want to be held to the ground, a bird, after it is a bird, and gluing them to the bathroom wall but I'm only just learning to migrate. I untie the strings from my ankles and am dragged across the blasted landscape by planets, arriving at her doorstep, a delivery from the tide. Three, we are from the South, but we are not of the South is what my Detroit-raised grandmother repeated to my mother. And my mom ran from the South, sleeping in national parks and on the sidewalks of towns. We didn't have much when we got to Oregon, she told me. I was born with leaves beneath my skin, not at home behind a closed front door, not at home on a sidewalk corner, 
not at home until my foot met the accelerator.